I'm Justin Davis, and today you're going to learn about LiPo chargers. What's up, my friends? Welcome into the FPV and drone hobby. If you're brand new to charging LiPo batteries, you may have had a DJI drone in the past, and now you're deciding that you want to try FPV for the first time, but everything is different with FPV and FPV racing drones. They have different style batteries, they have different connectors, and they have different chargers. So today's video, we're going to give you a refresher and updated look at how to charge LiPos in 2022. It is middle of 2022 right now. I'm going to show you some more recent chargers to check out. You can check out some of the links in the description, but let's go ahead and get started talking about batteries, chargers, and the leads that you need to charge these batteries, as well as being safe while charging. Here we go. Now, the good news is, guys, this FPV hobby is much cheaper than something like DJI or Altel parts. If you're buying a charger or batteries from DJI or Altel, it's going to be probably triple to quadruple the price of any type of LiPo battery or LiPo charger. The good news is that a 4S, say 1300 battery, this is our main battery that we usually use in the FPV hobby. These batteries cost around $25 to $30 per battery. That way you can get a bag full of them and have many, many flights. These drones do have less flight time than DJI and Altel drones. Don't expect to get like a 35 minute flight time out of these batteries, but the fun factor is way higher and the durability factor on all this stuff is way higher than anything DJI or Altel sells. Um, so also you have a, a, an option to be able to fix things yourself instead of having to rely on DJI or Altel to fix things. So that is much better. The next big battery that a lot of people use is a smaller battery. Um, it is a 4S 850 milliamp battery. That is a smaller little yellow connector that we use on these batteries and those can charge on any of the 4S chargers that are available uh, and i have to say the range on the charger prices for these are anywhere from 20 to 30 dollars all the way up to about 150 dollars at the most people are spending around 200 for lipo chargers most of these chargers do have built-in power supplies as well so that's super awesome you don't have to have an extra external power supply like back in the old days now a lot of these have built-in fans and some of them are small enough that they have just little heat sinks on there so if you're just getting started i would honestly recommend something like a little 4s charger to get you started you're really not going to be flying 6s batteries to start um, that's going to be somewhere down the road and i recommend say six months down the road if you want to kind of level up to a 6s fpv race drone do that later after you have some experience flying a 4s drone um, a very critical advice for you guys toolkit rc sells this one this is the m4 ac this one can plug into the wall any us adapter it has a heat sink on here and you can charge up to 4s batteries it has one xt60 port on there and you can also add a balance board and that way you can charge up to like six batteries at once on this little single charger and it's super portable you could also use in this in the field if you have an external power bank you could plug in the ac port to it and you're often charging lipos in the field so that's super great this one is a really good price you can check this one out in the video description link uh, also use my code on that one bg davis 2021 that one's still good now the next charger i'm going to recommend is also another 4s charger and this one is toolkit rc q4 ac this means that it charges from the wall it will charge five amp on four ports right here. So you could also add balance board on these and charge a whole lot of LiPos at once. So you can charge two ways again with this one. Uh, it is a hundred watt. It has an AC port on the back and an external input here for an XT60, which means that you can take a big battery, a big LiPo battery, plug it into the back of this and use it anywhere in the world. You don't need an AC outlet or an EU outlet to plug this in. You can charge it in the field. That's pretty cool. So if you get something like a 4S, uh, say uh, 4,000 to 5,000 milliamp battery as your external charge, bank battery you can hook it up to this and then you can charge your 4s 1300s and remember you're not putting a full charge back into this battery you're only topping it off so you can really go quite a long time with a 4000 milliamp battery as your external input battery so uh, pretty cool we'll talk about the voltage range on this one a little bit later uh, but I, I would stick to around a 4s input battery on that one if you're going to be charging in the field now the other battery uh, charger that
that's super popular out there is the D8 Duo Pro. And this one's been around for a while. It has two ports on the front, a built-in fan, and can also charge from AC from the wall or the XT60 input in the back. Um, that's also super cool. And it looks like the DC range on this one uh, is up to about 30 volt there. So you could use something even as large as like a 6S battery input on this one. I'll try to find a link to this one to see if it's still in stock. I can't guarantee it is. But also let's talk about our connectors because there are two main types of connectors in this hobby. There are XT60 number one. The next connector is the XT30, and the XT30 is typically on the smaller batteries, uh, and typically we don't really see too many 6S batteries with, uh, say, XT30s on there, but there are some out there for the more powerful micro quads, uh, but most of them use these XT30s on 4S, 3S, and 2S. When you get below 2S, if you're using a 1S battery, a lot of times they use the PH 2.0 connectors uh, or the Betaflight BT 2.0 connectors. I know this is a lot to take in, but um, uh, trust me, in the long run, these acronyms are going to be something that you see every day in this hobby. So, uh, Also, with leads, you're going to need some leads because most of these chargers the ports on them are XT60. It looks like a little yellow connector here. And this little yellow connector will allow you to add an adapter on it and adapt it down to something like an XT30. And uh, I'll put some links down below for these adapters. It just looks like a little XT60 plug with a little bit of wire, positive and negative, down to the XT30 connector there. Um, and this one is the female side of it so that this battery will plug in and you can charge. Now, these have a built-in balance port as well. This little white connector on here, super important that you plug this in correctly. Um, you should go from the negative side over on most of these chargers. And it's usually marked on the balance port. When you plug that in, you'll plug it in from the black side all the way over to the positive side. And this is a 4S charger, so the way it's set up, it's not going to let you accidentally plug it in wrong um, and get in inverse polarity. You don't want to do that because you could fry something. The next thing is you need uh, some alternative style connectors if you want to charge other types of batteries. You can also charge Lions on some of these. Uh, LIFE, nickel metal, they'll charge your RC car batteries. This is a Dean's connector, and this is a little tiny um, kind of uh, uh, positive and negative flat and vertical style mount here. This one goes for most of the nickel metal style batteries. Um, but if you're not driving RC cars, don't worry about the Dean's connector. This is kind of an old school connector uh, that you don't really need. Now, next big thing, guys, is safety. When you're first charging your LiPos, you, I, I say that you have to really watch the videos and be super careful charging LiPos. A friend of mine just burned down his entire house uh, because he had a fire in his shop. So a lot of these fires start in the shop and they spread throughout the house. So uh, these batteries can go up especially while charging. They always tell you never to walk away from a battery charger while you're charging a battery. Don't just get on your bike, uh, ride to the store, or go for a run, leave the house at all. You want to stay within uh, a pretty close proximity to your LiPo charger. Also, they make a sound when they're about to pop. They'll make a fizzing sound. If they start to break or burst, once this liquid inside this battery touches the air, it can ignite. So um, as soon as you get a puncture hole in this battery, this battery could blow up uh, three to four feet across. A fireball could take up this whole video right here. So uh, a 4S 1300 will burn your house down. Even something as small as the 4S 850 as well with the XT30 connector. But these are both very volatile. So a safe charge rate would be something like one, uh, one amp on, on either of these. And if you charge at a lower amperage, you're going to have a much longer battery life. It'll last you much longer. I've had some of my LiPos for over 10 years. They still work. They don't work great. And I use them for charging uh, or, or powering like goggles or something like that. But it's really important that you take care of your batteries. Don't charge them at five amp. Uh, if you see that the maximum output of your charger, say like this Q4 right here has a maximum output per, per port of five amp, don't put five amp into a 4S. 850 battery that's going to be a bad day for you it could swell and puff you see it maybe even start smoking and you have about five seconds to get it outside before it bursts into flames and burns a hole in your driveway so the flame is very hot coming off these batteries so be super careful i would charge uh, again around one amp don't use the maximum 
amperage from your charger available to to the smaller batteries especially um, even charging 5 amp on something like a 4s 1300 would be crazy um, the rating on this battery is a 1300 milliamp so if you if you look at that put a decimal between the one and the three and you got 1.3 amp at a safe charge right there so um, that's how you can look at that say a 3000 milliamp battery you could charge that one at three amp uh, 2200 2.2 amp and so on um, and you get down to like 750 milliamp you might want to be charging at like 0.7 amp on this um, you could probably charge up to about one amp on this safely if you're close by for a quick charge but uh, the smaller batteries i wouldn't charge much over an amp uh, you want to be super careful and the smaller ones something like a 4s um, say or a 3s uh, 450 milliamp i mean i'm charging like 0.5 amp on those so um, take your time go slow on your battery charging and you're going to have a much safer and better fpv experience trust me on this one um, i've had a lot of guys have house fires in our hobby so um, the next big thing for safety is a battery bunker when you're charging charge somewhere where it's totally flat you don't have a lot of stuff behind you that could catch on fire if you do have a fire you want to be conscious of the things around your charge station don't just charge on your living room couch um, because these chargers when they're sitting on something like fabric they don't have a lot of airflow so sit it on a hard solid object that you have a lot of airflow and the fans can work properly um, just like your laptop if it's sitting in your lap it's going to get super hot same thing with these electronics they'll get super hot and they can overheat some of them do have heating protection uh, and over voltage protection so there are there are chargers out there that can do that but um, for, for you guys that are just charging uh, i recommend building the battery bunker you can do this for about 10 to 20 dollars go to home depot buy some large 24 inch tiles put two of those down surround it with center blocks then put two tiles on the top and you have your first simple battery bunker. It's very effective and it works great. Um, so I, I highly recommend building a battery bunker. You can look up YouTube videos on that as well. So um, I hope that this uh, video really helped you guys out today and gives you an idea of how to get started in the FBB hobby and give you some real core tips on how to stay safe and keep your batteries running for the long term. So I'm gonna put my top five chargers in the video description. You can check those out, um, one through five. For my, my number one pick is gonna be a budget charger, and then all the way down to number five would be my, uh, my meat and potato style charger. So you guys can check those out. Um, any of the links that you grab in this video will benefit the Drone Camps channel. You can also check me out on Patreon if you want. My link's down there as well, and I really appreciate any support on Patreon because we do try to help educate the FPV community and the new guys coming into the hobby. Very important to me that you guys know what you're doing and you stay self-sufficient. So uh, ask any questions you'd like to on the comments down below in this video and get involved in the Drone Camps community as well on Facebook, guys. Please do subscribe. I'm Justin Davis. Take care, and I will see you on the next one. Happy FPV, everybody.